the Interface Center and Corporate Responsibility found out early that in order to make change in corporate behavior and structures, it couldn't do it alone. So first, the faith-based organizations had natural allies and partners, partly because they were part of the same institution. So you had religious orders that had groups in Zimbabwe or in India or in Hong Kong. So when we would go to a company and say, what are you doing in your global supply chain around workplace human rights, around environmental issues in the communities around where you're operating or your suppliers are operating, we had a natural built-in kind of infrastructure. It's not enough to just have a policy that's adopted. What's the impact on the ground? So it's so important in, to have net, a network, a global network of organizations that can provide feedback. Is it real? Is it working? And how is it affecting you know, improvements? And in, take any issue, and we've developed relationships. Uh, one project we worked on that helped, helped set the bar in the 90s on global principles, called Principles for Global Corporate Responsibility, convened a meeting in 98 of about 90 different groups from all over the world, giving feedback on a set of principles, criteria, and benchmarks for measuring business performance. So uh, South Africa, the, the, uh, the, the Episcopal Church, the Anglican Church there, uh, got involved, and then they formed benchmarks uh, for social responsibility in Southern Africa. And they've been operating uh, from 98 until they're still, still working. They are critical if we, let's say we're working on trafficking issues on World Cup, and the World Cup is taking place in South Africa. There's a built-in infrastructure of groups that then we can call on to help support the work that we're trying to do to get companies to adopt human trafficking or anti-human trafficking policies. On issues related to global supply chains, Hong Kong Christian Industrial Committee that does reports based on worker interviews in factories in China helps to re, sort of reinforce the, the question, is the policy, the code that's being adopted, implementing in, implemented in a certain way that helps uh, workers improve their lives. So now, the, I think now the critical issue is the uh, global multi-stakeholder initiative. So for example, ICCR has been involved with the global, uh, this is the global sustainability initiative that the retailers and brands have gotten together to say, we can't do it alone, we have to work together. So it's the it's a sustainability work within the supply chain that has about 50 companies, European, US, and there's an advisory group of human rights groups that are based in different countries. And without that information, we as investors that are engaging companies on a regular basis just don't know whether the statement that really is very, very credible in human rights or trafficking is actually being implemented take away that network and we're standing alone and the change you know isn't going to take place